Well, you know those sky pirates that stole my ship. Is this threats? Yeah, uh, I kinda told them to do that. And let them steal it. Well, that actually makes sense, Red said in a super casual tone, as he sipped his coffee. I to jump to conclusions. I'll let you explain yourself before I cast judgment. Much appreciated, is what he said, as he did a short bow before explaining everything. people. I'm more of an advocate for justice than upholding the law. I see. Izuka relaxed a bit. Well, I'm still more than a bit nervous. It just, feels like dash. A slippery slope. Unfinished. That's the conundrum. Where do you draw the line? Too close and you'll be defenseless. Too far, and you're just as bad as the people you're fighting. The worst part is there's almost never an answer. At least not one that can't be only be found in hindsight. But there are a few landmarks that might help you out. Mainly murder. Have you killed anyone? No. Is it aside? Thankfully I haven't had to cross that yet. That's good. Regardless of what you have to do, I've seen you should always speak up with respect. Run it up. The moment you realize that you have nothing but a resource for all the time, or anything like that, is when you yourself to become something less than human. Right. Izuka nodded. Taking those words to heart. Thank you. You're welcome, and I'm glad you opened up to me about it. Ren told him, isolation is the enemy of mankind. Even if you have to keep your secrets, having a few people to who you can tell everything, and who can advise you with a little advice, is more valuable than anything else. Except for your children, of course. Now, let's start the session your cognition changed or not until we run into Bakugo. And even then, cognition changes can be wild. Even if Bakugo is weaker, it won't guarantee that it'll be a cakewalk from here on. I know that. Izuka sighed as he opened the door and they entered the school itself. I just want to see the effects of this so I can finally start letting her work with my children. I understand, but patience is key when it comes to healing, Ren told him. Remember that. The EKU. Kaboom. Exploded down the hall, heading towards the two of them at my goblin speed. Whack! But I'm something different. Back then, he didn't even need to be close to me to hurt me. But now, he's not even a concern. Don't talk down to me, DKU. The fake Bakugo roared out in rage as he once again exploded himself over to them, talking to her back and ready to fire an explosion. Kugo landed on his feet, Heracles' hand came out of the smoke and grabbed him by the head. Ah! Let go! Cognitive Bakugo roared, as he unleashed explosion after explosion onto Heracles, but it did nothing to the beast. Killing this thing won't have any effect on me or the real world Bakugo right? Izuku asked. Nope, Ren said with a pop. Crush! Without another wasted second, Heracles crushed Cognitive Bakugo's head, allowing it to dissolve into shadow. Let's go! Izuka said, as he walked forward, not paying the matter any more mind. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
judging by the time. Ready to face whatever horrors they find inside. The classroom itself was far bigger than it was in real life, roughly 50 times the size. And it looked more like a prison than a classroom, with bars on the windows. In the center of the room, the shadow is open. Messy hair, baggy eyes, and a pale complexion. Only he was in his middle school uniform. As they entered the room, Shadow Azuku opened his eyes, allowing them to see they were yellow instead of green. So you finally came. The Shadow said in a detached tone. Honestly, I didn't think you'd get past Kaku, but you've gotten pretty full of yourself, haven't you, Dad? That notebook, Izuku said, pointing to said object. Get rid of it. Shadow Azuku glared at his other self. No. You can't keep going like this, Ren added, that's why we're here, we're going to free you, whether you like it or not. Shadow is a big brick of tea, and now it's not this type of thing, causing a change to the type of world. in your next life. The word chains wrapped around Shadow Azuka, completely obscuring him from sight and taking form until they formed a colossus made of chains with many faces all over the place. Then, the chain colossus raised the bar and the Zuka and the Nash jumped back as it slammed its arm into the ground, causing the chain to shake. It's controlling the chains, the chain back, and the Zuka and the Nash. Zuka nodded. Heracles. Heracles appeared in front of Izuku, before jumping at the chain colossus, his weapon raised and ready to strike. Failure. The faces on the colossus roared, spitting out more harsh language, with took physical form and rushed at Heracles. Heracles batted them away, but this left him open to getting grabbed by the colossus's hand. Right. Heracles roared, as he struggled to free himself, the chains around him broke easily, but they just kept replenishing themselves, keeping him from escaping. Arsene. Ren shouted as he summoned his own persona and shot out a massive purple flame on the Colossus's wrist. Boom! The flame exploded, destroying the Colossus's wrist and causing his hand to fall, freeing Heracles, who shattered the chain around him, before landing on his feet. Before running towards the Colossus. The Colossus raised its foot ready to crush Ren when the therapist threw the tape recorder at its foot. The device embedded itself in between the chains and, You can do it, caretaker, shouted Kiba's voice. Kaboom! Regenerating its foot, but the process was far slower, giving them some time to breathe. I'll create an opening, you grab the book, got it, Ren said. Izuka nodded. Right. With that decided, Ren ran forward, rushing past the Colossus, before throwing another recorder at the back of its other leg. Your amazing dad! shouted Netsu's voice. Kaboom! The back of its leg exploded, causing it to start falling forward. Heracles! Izuka shouted as Heracles showed up in front of him before jumping forward towards the Colossus, and punching it, making it fall back instead. Renamed his grappling hook, and fire it, allowing him to speed away onto the side of the wall, as the Colossus fell. Then he threw a few recorders onto the Colossus's chest. I love you, Thanks.
explosion of light burst from the Colossus's chest, revealing Shadow Azuko underneath, clutching his notebook. Hack! Shadow Azuko gasped as his eyes widened in fear. Is it the summon Heracles and jumped on his back? Before Heracles bolted onto the fallen Colossus, running out of the like a Enough is enough, Izuku shouted as he leaned down and grabbed onto the notebook. No, please, Shadow Izuku cried as he tried to hold onto the notebook, but slowly but surely, it was slipping out of his grip. It's time to let go, Izuku cried as he finally pried the notebook from his shadow's hands. Suddenly, the colossus turned white, before glowing so bright it blinded everyone in the room. When the light died down, Izuku and Ren were standing side by side, with Shadow Izuku on his knees in front of them. The chains having vanished entirely, in my dream, Shadow Izuku said quietly, tears streaming down from his eyes. we held on to that dream. We never even came close to achieving it. We couldn't even reach the starting line. Honestly, the lack of self-awareness here is astonishing. Well tell me if I'm wrong, but you've done a lot of saving in the past year have you not? Ren asked. If you judge yourself by what you haven't done then, of course, you seem like a failure. But when you look at both sides, things become a lot more clear. On one hand, you didn't become a hero. On the other hand, you took down the Yakuza, helped the year about this family business, fought and put away several villains, and helped bring forth a new era of scientific progress, which you are using to cure some of the most infamous diseases known to man among other things. Helped get my sister a job she loves, saved Tokoshi's grandson, gave MS Bureau a job despite her being blacklisted by the HPSC. Shadow Azuku agreed as he looked his other self in the eyes. We, we've achieved something, we did manage to help quite a bit I guess. More than a bit. We've done a lot for a kid without a parent. Azuku retorted, and we need to recognize that. For their sakes if anything. Right. Shadow Azuku said, before looking up at the notebook in Azuku's hand. And, there's one more thing we need to do. Azuku looked down at the notebook, and then at his shadow self, before the two of them nodded. Azuku held out the notebook to his shadow self, who took it back. Shadow Azuku looked down at the notebook and the he vanished entirely. Suddenly, the school started to shake, and cracks appeared in the room. Alright, time to make our exit. Ren said as he and Azuka started running out of the room, making their way to the exit. But, for 
For some reason, I feel like I'm gonna miss it. That's what healing feels like, Ren told him. Well, I feel a lot better than worse, so I think I can say it worked. Izuka smiled. Which means we can start therapy sessions with the kids now. Right. Ren nodded. Although, Lavenza told me to warn you about something. A new distortion is appearing in your heart. One caused by all the fear and stress you've been feeling. Izuka frowned. That, I, just be careful not to let fear control you.